Hello, everybody, and welcome back to yet another cast. Guys, after the conclusion of the last game that I just finished casting on Green Ace Extended, I am now casting yet another game on a map called Mana Core. And now, uh, that last game, which I was casting live, did not uh, go the distance in the way that I had hoped, but this one does, because... Uh, the game has been completed. I have no idea who wins. I have not watched the replay. I've just heard it was a good game. It is a 4v4 and it's on a map I've never actually uh, casted before called Mana Core. Um, this is another Deox map. I have to say, Deox makes really interesting maps. Um, he's just very creative. He loves, I think, making these uh, big TRP style uh, huge, um, you know, epic, uh, 4v4 or 5v5 style escalation maps. So, uh, I can just tell you that this game is going to be a banger. There's no doubt about it. I absolutely can guarantee you this one is going to, uh, I think go much longer than the last game did and uh, part of that has to do with the teams uh, as I mentioned in my last cast I think Stagma and Harold are very evenly matched in these big team games as players uh, but we also have of course fan favorite EXE in this game the the man the myth the legend so here in blue Harold here in light blue EXE and yellow we have Thanos from last game, and we have Mr. FRBR in dark green. So that will be our Western team or team one. For team two, we have in bright green, Lemon Kynan, again, a very strong player, especially in team games. Uh, in purple, we have Wotan. In orange, we have Robbo, who, uh, this man was the reason that they won last game. He broke through with that nicely timed Maverick push and killed Thanos base extremely efficiently. So we'll have to see if he can give us a similar performance this game. And finally, the previously mentioned Stagma Jr. Now, the reason I like this map is because it has a naval uh, element to it. I like the fact that we are probably going to see some ships. Uh, well, not probably, definitely. Uh, Mr. Dark Green starting a shipyard right away. And uh, perhaps Stagma doing the same. We'll have to see. We will have to see uh, what our red player wants to do. But yeah, no. Uh, Stagma definitely going for the naval yard as soon as he reasonably can already. Brown with a little bit of flash harassment, but uh, yeah, this game certainly going to be very even. I'll say some of the similar things as I said last game. Um, it feels like Harold's team is going to have the advantage just by default, Harold being the strongest escalation player, but we cannot count the Eastern team out, who I will call the underdogs, team two here. Stagma is an extremely strong player. We've seen him beat Harold before in team games. So this game could certainly go either way. Uh, a lot of it is going to rest on the shoulders of uh, the players that are supporting the uh, our two juggernauts here in this game. And of course, Lemminkainen. We've seen takeover games many, many times in casts, especially if he can get to that T3 phase start overwhelming his opponents with sheer force and firepower. So uh, with that said, let the game, let the games commence, my friends. I would love to see some juicy naval combat in this particular cast, um, especially if we could get T2 and even T3 naval uh, warfare. Now guys, Remember, core T3 ships can walk on land, so it is not just troll to build uh, core T3 naval as the ships will grow legs and begin walking. 
But uh, a, a decent sized battle here in the middle. Or uh, just closer to the left side as, uh, as purple and yellow duke it out. Just armies of AKs and Peewees. At this point in the game, that's nothing too unusual. These are the infantry K-Bot. Very well suited for that early game raiding in the Escalation mod, of course. And in, uh, in OTA and 3.1C, you almost never saw the AK and the Peewee because they were pretty garbage. But in Escalation, they are quite strong. Early on, you can build build them for, uh, like I said, raiding purposes and combat to a lesser degree as this game does uh, at the beginning have some action happening on the left side. I do think that Light Blue will save his con there. So it's a huge map. I probably won't be able to keep an eye on everything that's happening, but right now it is just small skirmishes breaking out at uh, different corners of the map. Light blue with our first bombing runs of the game. Mr. EXE, of course, known for his uh, incredible aerial play. Getting a little bit of damage done here early on, but we'll lose that bomber. Uh, we'll lose the bomber as a result, so... Guys, one thing I'll tell you, this game is going to tech up very quickly. Just the, the way the map is designed, especially the fact that the middle is made out of lava here. If the middle was made out of water, this would be a very different map. Um, you could, of course, send hovercraft across and, uh, and pelicans and uh, even ships, of course. But the fact that the middle of the map is created out of lava creates a situation where the distances between the player bases are rather large. And so because of that, uh, I think both teams will feel pretty comfortable teching up to T2 extremely quickly. And uh, that will allow us the opportunity to see the late game prowess of these players to see how they perform in that sort of uh, ultra late game scenario as now brown with some bombing of his own getting a few mexes but nothing again too irreplaceable has been done here just a bit of light rating early on in the game so again guys i want to keep an eye on the naval combat this game it could play a huge part and the reason why is because if either team is able to take full control of the sea they will then have the ability to bring their ships up the coast here and then start inflicting economic damage. So, for example, if Stagma could win the sea here, he could then move up into this cove and begin destroying production structures and uh, economics as well. So, that will, that may be an important uh, factor in how this game plays out. I'm definitely want to try to keep an eye on how the naval combat does play out this game because uh, as I've said in casts previously I love naval combat in Escalation I think it's uh, some of the best naval combat that the uh, entire TA franchise has to offer it's really enjoyable to watch but uh, Speaking of naval combat, Stagma definitely taking an early lead here, finding a single lurker hiding there under the water. But uh, it won't last long against all of these enforcers and corsairs. As, uh, as I mentioned before, both teams now teching to T2. Now, one thing that may have a big impact on this game is which team can control the south part of the map. So this, or I guess what we could call it the center, the center south, because uh, there are these big patches of metal that, uh, that both teams have access to, and whichever team can begin to 
take these patches of metal, we'll get a significant economic advantage. There's also, of course, the patches of metal in the south, east, and west as well. But uh, if one team can take these metal, uh, take control of this territory and get that extra metal for themselves, it could have a big impact on the outcome, but we'll have to see. Right now it's very even, both sides doing a decent job of holding their respective positions. It's basically split right down the middle. So uh, right now... Game very close, but uh, Stag doing a decent job of pushing through the southwest, maybe winning the naval battle. Like I said, this would just be disastrous for the western team, especially Dark Green, as he's got his advanced k lab just off the shore there. I'm sure Stagma would be uh, more than happy to uh, send Dark Green's production facilities to uh, Davy Jones' locker, if he can. He's building an army here, gathering an army, gathering a fleet, destroyers and, and uh, corsairs. But let's check out the player bases here, guys, because uh, I don't expect that anything too uh, out of the ordinary is happening, but let's just check. Lots of T2. Oh, wow. This is a little out of the ordinary. Stag rushing T2, reclaiming his T1 uh, his T1 shipyard and going straight into T2 and now building an executioner. So Stag wasting no time. But uh, again, um, I've said before, guys, a mark of a good player in Escalation is the ability to tech up and get an advantage, both economically and in terms of technology. Uh, but while still applying pressure to the opponent. So typically, a uh, just an average player, they will, they will stop applying pressure in order to tech up, but a good player will be able to apply pressure and behind that pressure uh, be gaining an even uh, greater advantage over you. So uh, in the words of Artosis, when you're ahead, get even more ahead. That is basic RTS strategy. When you have an advantage over your opponent, create an even bigger advantage. But uh, having said that, Dark Green, with some Crusaders of his own pushing back, this will force Stagma into a retreat. But little does Dark Green know that Stagma is now on T2 ships. And uh, the first... Shredder and the first Executioner now slowly um, making their way to the, uh, the front line of this battle. But uh, once again, which, whichever team is able to hold control of the sea will also be able to hit these southern bases and deal some economic damage that way. So this, uh, this, this naval battle may seem insignificant, but I promise you it's not. It will have a big impact on the game. Either way, but now, Harold using his Mortys to shell uh, Lemminkainen's poor uh, heavy laser tower. Interestingly, uh, Brown telling Wotan, uh, who is purple, to kill Blue. So, I'm try I guess he's telling Wotan to take his force here and just march it up into Harold's uh, middle base there because Lemminkainen in a bit of trouble. As I mentioned earlier, both teams need to hold these uh, positions in order to get the extra economic advantage. The battle's still raging in the south here as uh, Stagma. Equal numbers of destroyers, but now a Shredder making it to the front line, which could turn the tides. The Shredder is no slouch. It will send out Tons of death charges if we can get into range, and that will force our green to retreat there. Lemminkainen with a counter push. Wotan bringing his Zeus's up, so some nice teamwork on the west side, preventing um, preventing Harold from simply 
walking into their base and killing production structures. Unfortunately, Harold's already done a decent amount of economic damage as it is. So, I like that the, the Eastern team working together, but uh, Harold is certainly a problem this game. As a well-placed heavy laser tower will stop this push, I think, from getting as much accomplished as the Eastern team would like. But uh, for now, the heavy laser tower being targeted. And then Kynan still with a decently sized force, but I'm afraid that uh, it's not going to be enough to get get everything done that they like to. Yexi bringing his air power into the game, using his freedom fighters to contribute to this battle. Maybe give Team 1 more of an edge, but again, I think this push is going to be stopped. Good teamwork by Team 2, but also good teamwork by uh, the Western team as well with uh, yellow and light blue providing support to Harold. You guys, I did mention earlier in the cast that uh, our supporting actors could make the difference here in how this plays out. Battle, battles between Titans or Juggernauts. But, uh, wow. The, I, I like the size of this army here. This uh, Dark Green's fleet is pretty impressive. This Executioner is a little far back, and uh, this will allow Dark Green, I think, to have an advantage in this combat. Uh, a, bit, a bit of a missed micro there by Stagma. This Executioner was in the front, the battle would have turned out completely differently, I think. This Executioners are extremely expensive, but they uh, absolutely dominant in the sea, especially against T1 ships, so... Yeah, we'll have to see whether Stag can, uh, whether he can use his tech advantage, now bringing a second Executioner, to push Dark Green back and get control of the pond here. But Dark Green is on T2 as well and building his own Conquerors. So, uh, that battle will even out as the, uh, the war continues to rage here in the center of the map. Both sides doing a decent job. Uh, kind of uh, both applying pressure and defending themselves. Now Dark Green with his own Mavericks. But uh, Zeus's have a pretty decent uh, matchup against Mavericks. If they can get in range. I think these Mavericks probably aren't going to get that much accomplished a lot of action happening. I'm trying to keep up with all of it as uh, seems like Lemminkainen has built a well-placed Viper here, which should give him some defense, but oh man, nice use of thuds by Thanos. I'll range this Viper and it will get almost nothing accomplished. So once again, guys, using your unit's range, using your unit's Ability to uh, outrange their de enemy defenses. It's an extremely effective strategy. Do not walk your units uh, into enemy range if you can outrange them. Harold with some bombing runs. It will kill um, an extractor, but not much else. Wotan now pushing back with his uh, with his Zeus's and causing. Harold to retreat a little bit, but uh, the Western team, the hands of Harold, definitely in the uh, in the advantageous position as they've taken out the uh, the metal extractors here and here over and over again while protecting their own extremely well. So uh, nice job by Harold, but Thanos. He has been explaining that uh, Stagma beginning to uh, feel like a problem. He's killing his metal patches. 
here in the southwest corner of the map, and now perhaps a critical mass of executioners. These will uh, shoot through the Crusaders in no time. And now, even though Dark Green is on T2, Stagma perhaps with a critical mass of, uh, of cruisers, and that could prove uh, to be a horrible situation. Guys, I did mention earlier on in this cast that uh, Harold and Stagma are our biggest players in this game, and I think we're seeing that right now. Harold having the biggest influence on the middle, but Stagma finally breaking through the southwest and now even heading towards Dark Green's base with a huge army or a huge fleet of ships. Uh, however, there is a single assault submarine and an archer. Can this one assault submarine stop this? With the shredders, they should be able to, with good micro, prevent this from uh, killing all of Stagma's army, but uh, we'll have to see as uh, Dark Green is now building even more submarines, a couple piranhas moving down as well. But uh, yeah, Stagma, like Thanos said, Stagma causing a lot of trouble off the coastline. As I mentioned earlier, Naval could play a big role this game. However, the Stalker hitting the Executioner just outside of its range. The Executioners have no type of submarine defense, so they will be vulnerable. As the battle continues to rage in the middle, Wotan pushing through with the help of Lemminkainen, trying to 2v1 Harold, who's been nothing but a thorn in their side. Harold on sumos now, and these are extremely effective in the defensive position. But is it enough? That is a lot of uh, Zeus's and spiders. I want to keep an eye on the battle here in the sea as well. It's one stalker. It will be pushing back Stagma's army for now. And guys, remember, it takes a, a lifetime for naval units to move all the way around the edges of the map to get to the other side. So uh, that is the difficulty. Um, for Stagma and attempting to apply that naval pressure. Thanos pushing forward with cans. The battle in the middle couldn't be any closer really. Both sides participating. A lot of players involved uh, in the skirmish. Harold attempting to use those spiders to paralyze the cans and give his Zeus is the advantage in this combat. The problem is that these sumos are growing in number and sumos are uh, king of T2. I, for core, I, I've said before, sumo like T2.5. Oh, hold that thought because EXE has been preparing an absolute, uh, absolute counter to the uh, this army. Stagmas here. So many depth charge gunships flying in. The Zephyrs. And even though Stagma had uh, some air defense in here, EXE has even more air power than uh, than what Red can currently than, uh, excuse me, yeah, than what uh, Stagma can currently deal with. And those two archers, not enough to stop all of this air power. Very impressive job by EXE. He will save his teammate Dark Green, who was in a terrifying situation against Stagma's vastly superior uh, naval force here. And uh, now, Stagma in a full retreat, losing most of his uh, most of his fleet to EXE's well-timed attack there. And uh, now the Western team breaking through with the help of these sumos, like I said. They're just kind of the king of T2 and Thanos as well. Good teamwork by the Western team. Pushing the, uh, pushing the Eastern team back to the edges of their base here. Can't lose this advanced k lab. That would just be terrible for Lemminkainen. And now this Warlord is also in trouble. EXE on an absolute rampage. 
saving his team single-handedly from uh, naval destruction at the hands of Stagma, allowing Dirk Green just a little breathing room to try and uh, take control of the sea, or wrestle control of the sea back from Stagma. So EXE, uh, a well-timed uh, support there for his team, I think, if, if the if the uh, if the Western team had just ignored Stagma and let him take control of the sea completely, the game might have ended right there. Especially once that warlord hit the Western side. But uh, now, instead, the Western team looking truly dominant. This advanced Kbot lab will go down as Dark Green with an army of Mavericks backed up by Yellows, Mortys, and of course Heralds cans and sumos as well things are looking rather dire i think for our eastern team stagma was uh stagma was in a wonderful position uh, in the in the sea but now with exe's help the western team will prevail in pushing him off and uh wow that is an impressive fleet of both Conquerors, Stalkers, and Piranha. These Mavericks continuing to push through just like the last game I cast. This is a horrible situation for the Eastern team to be in. You never want to be on the receiving end of that many Mavericks, especially when you have almost nothing to, uh, to stop them. And now Harold moving through this choke point here. With this army of Sumos and Cans. This is looking a bit uh, dire, I think, for the Eastern team. I'm not sure what you do from here. These cans are all pretty healthy. And the Sumo's even more so. How do they stop this? There's going to have to be some good D-guns here. But holy cow, this game is looking over for the Eastern team. As uh, Harold, with the support of his teammates, is... Uh, doing a ton of damage. Wotan in the chat expressing his frustration. This is a bad situation. Cannot have that many cans and sumos knocking on your door. I don't know what the Eastern team can do from here. That is so many sumos. You never want that many sumos in your base. That is... Uh, yeah, that's, that's that's not a situation that any uh, any sane human being would want to find themselves on the receiving end of. Can they stop this before it just demolishes everything? Lemminkainen volunteering to send his commander in. Somebody has to do something. If, if they just allow, uh, allow Harold to move through here with these Kansas Sumos, the game will end. I simply don't have enough to stop this. Nowhere even close. Wotan assuring Lemminkainen that they can stop this, but I don't see how. This looks uh, existential. I think uh, this situation... Oh, man. Harold once again showing his dominance. A fight breaking out in the, in the sea. Warlords getting pincered between penetrators and submarines. There are a few shredders, but they're out of position. They need to be moving forward to take out the submarines. These warlords need support as uh, Harold continuing to push through. Lemminkainen with some nice D-guns, but I think he's going to lose his commander. Yeah, he will lose his commander in order to... Uh, kill Harold's force so the problem is the western team has now lost both battleships of Stagma and they have lost Lemminkainen one of their strongest players and from this position man it's uh, it's looking a bit unwinnable with EXC following up this wonderfully timed attack with a beautiful bombing run which will take out two fusions there just really rubbing salt into the wound. That is 
That is a horrifying, uh, horrifying feeling that, uh, right after you lose one of your best players, EXE coming in to a perfectly timed bombing run to, uh, kind of push in the knife. So, yeah. Look, um, it's not technically over for the Eastern team, but, uh, it, it feels kind of over. Stagma was doing well in the C until EXE came and, uh, stuck his nose in their business. And now Stag struggling to even, uh, hold on to his side of the map, much less win the naval battle. Uh, one thing I will say is that Light Blue's use of uh, penetrators here definitely contributing to the war effort, hitting those warlords, making it harder for Stagma to control the sea here. And I'd like to see Stagma either bring his shredders into combat or retreat them to his side. Um, I think I think the shredders could probably win this fight, just barely. But uh, he's going to have to make a decision. He can't just let uh, just let BR kill his uh, shredders from a distance. It's pretty sad to see Stagma very slow to respond here. And uh, again, if he had used those shredders effectively, or if he had actually sent them into combat, I think it could have been much closer. But nonetheless, again, the Eastern team in a uh, nearly impossible situation. Now light blue EXE knocking on the doorstep. The penetrators such a beautiful unit. We do not see enough penetrators in Escalation. Guys, this is such a fantastic unit that we don't see enough of. I'd love to see I'd love to cast more penetrators. They're just so strong. They're even strong against T3. I think they get a damage bonus against most T3 units. So like there's just no reason we can't see more penetrators in Escalation. These things are uh, such an insanely fun unit to see and cast, and they're so strong as well. Stagma has now gone into air himself, and will be using those torpedoes to try to regain control of the sea. But I think Stagma is starting to feel that uh, the, the sea is no longer really... Uh, the focal point of this game as he has gone into T3 himself. Than is telling his team that recons are incoming. That is certainly the case. Is that Brown with some recons. The game has reached the T3 phase as multiple players are on T3. And even though the Eastern team is certainly behind are attempting a comeback. They're attempting to reclaim control of the middle of the sea, even though they're down a player, certainly one of their best players. They will not give up that easily. Doing their best to uh, push back, push back against uh, Harold. EXE especially. It's a very close battle in the middle, but uh, once again, it's going to be tough. It is going to be very difficult for the Eastern team to uh, really break out of this position as EXE, great use of penetrators this game. I love to see it. I'd love to see more penetrators in my cast. This is just such a wonderful, you know. I mean, look at these. They're just outranging everything Brown has, killing it from afar, dealing massive amounts of damage, especially now that penetrators have this upgrade with the double cannons. There's just really no excuse not to build these borderline overpowered monsters. EXE making them look broken in this game, but... Uh, once again, the game will it will continue, but with the Eastern team certainly at a disadvantage, down a player, and also 
terms of their map position, they are certainly down. And uh, economically, probably pretty far behind as well. Stagma has kind of had to abandon the sea battle in order to take Lemminkainen's place on the land and using cyclones to try to wrestle control of the sea or at least defend himself for now. But, uh... Harold building some blazes. We've seen them used to great effect in previous games. Still very close in the middle. And a nice job by Stagma using those torpedo bombers to push uh, Dark Green out of the sea and prevent Dark Green from start starting to shell their eco here. So, again, the Western team definitely ahead, but the game is not over. It will continue for now. Let's check out the player bases. Yexi almost on T3 air, and I think that could be terrifying once he finally finishes the T3 Ultra Aircraft Hangar. He begins pumping out auroras or whatever else he decides he would like to use. There's nothing I see on the eastern side that's uh, extremely noteworthy. But the uh, Team 2 really just doing the best they can to hold on as uh, man, EXE's penetrators MVP this game. 17 kills on that one monster. 10 kills on that one. 2 kills. 9 on that one. 9 on that one. 4 on that one. And 8 on that one. So all together, who knows how many kills they have. Probably over 50 easily. And just continuing to outrange almost everything. In the free shots. Each each laser, each attack, so devastating. Basically, each shot will kill an entire unit instantly. So, uh, Harold attempting a blaze attack, but it will not be successful there. As uh, the Eastern team trying to break out, but now Thanos with a line of emulators. Harold with all these Mortys. Not, maybe not paying attention. Eastern team will begin pushing up on these Mortys. Yeah, great use of penetrators this game. This is just so fantastic to uh, to see. They will lose most of the most of those Mortys, but backed up by a few Vipers. I don't know if the Eastern team can really break out of this containment that they are in here. Doing their best though. Stagma sending Mortys of his own. As uh, EXC has found these torpedo bombers, he is going to wrestle control of the sky back from Stagma. Prevent him from uh, having control of the sea. Stagma has his own vamp, but EXC certainly has more. And uh, now this Warlord has no support, so he will have to retreat that. Man, it is such a difficult game for the uh, for Team 2. They keep looking for answers, looking for some kind of uh, counterplay. But nothing is forthcoming at the moment. After losing Lemminkainen, certainly not the best situation to be in. Let's see what EXE is doing with his ultra aircraft hangar. Just building, uh, constructing aircraft first, now going into a Tempest. I'd love to see some Aurora this game. It's, I've said in previous cast guys, the Aurora, definitely my favorite unit in all of Escalation. It's so much fun to, uh, to see those dropping their nuclear payload on unsuspecting opponents. Uh, Stagma himself now going into T3 air, but he will be way behind EXE uh, in the process of getting there, so EXE will have a huge head start. But now, guys, I asked for it at the beginning of the cast. I wanted it, and now we have it. Dark Green is on T3 naval. And not only T3 naval, but 
core T3 naval, or no, wait, is it, is it core? I'm so, am I losing my mind here? Yeah. No, that's arm. Oh my god. Someone fire the caster. This, uh, this will be arm T3 naval. But nonetheless, even though these things can't walk on land, that will not matter too much because, uh, seeing the torrents in this game is going to be absolutely terrifying to the eastern team. And I think Stagma in particular, whose job it was really to uh, hold hold the sea. I like what Stagma's doing here. Building a lacerator to uh, push off EXE's aerial dominance in this area. But this torrent should be able to take care of the, the warlord without much trouble. So uh, gonna have to keep keep an eye on what's going on here. But yeah, unfortunately, because it's armed, the uh, the T three T three ships cannot walk on land. But they don't really need to walk on land. All they have to do is gain control of the sea and then start shelling the Eastern Teen's uh, base from off the shore. That will be more than enough, I think, to win the game as. Eastern team already at a disadvantage, getting shelled by T3 ships. Certainly not uh, going to make things feel any better. But uh, let's let's look at the Western team's base again. Let's see if they're doing anything like building nukes or um, even uh, some long-range plasma cannons could make a big difference on a map like this. But no, nothing. Nothing uh, too game ending yet. I think they're just slowly building up an advantage in the middle with a mammoth, a couple mammoths moving through of heralds. And I think Dark Green waiting for his second torrent before he does his final push into. Uh, into the eastern team's part of the map. Now building a Lancer as well. Yet, yeah, guys, we just don't see this very much. We do not th see a lot of these T3 ships very often, so I'm excited to see them in action if we do get to see that this game. But already, Harold and Thanos moving through the middle. There's quite a few shooters on the eastern side. It will make it difficult. To break through and a couple of Talos here as well with a Warlord for support. But uh, I am a bit afraid for what's going to happen as Dark Green finally moving his fleet. The XE, once again, beautiful use of these penetrators. Using the Bulldogs to give vision and provide some, some support there. But now, the torrent moving through it, I think this is going to be a terrifying situation. The torrent now making its way up the coast. There's a second warlord. But yeah, these torrents, uh, that is an amazing number of missiles. Staying up, bringing Talos and Mortys for support. It's one torrent so hard to kill. It's about to finish this warlord. More Talos and Mortys coming to the coastline. EXE bringing the, uh, the Zephyrs in as well as the uh, first torrent will go down. Stagma doing his best to hold on here with the help of EXE. Uh, doing a valiant job, I think, of holding on, despite the fact that the Western team in a better position on uh, on every battlefield, but in the air, uh, on the ground, and in the sea, Western team definitely having the advantage. But uh, Eastern team doing a valiant job of holding on, have a good composition. 
like all of the Lugers here and the Shooters as well. Forcing back the Torrents even. Now building an Arc Light. So I'm surprised the Arc Light wasn't the first one he built. He now has a Lancer in the water and of course these are kind of like floating Berthas. So we'll have to see if that can really make the difference that he needs it to make. EXC on a Tempest now. EXC, where are the Auroras, sir? I want to see some nuclear bombing runs. Stagma attempting a push of his own. But uh, I just think these penetrators are too strong. This is such a great defensive unit. Being able to pick off a Morty with every shot. Even kill these Talos without much trouble. Harold pushing through with Mammoth now, but uh, it's a decent number of shooters and looters in the mix here. And of course, well placed ambusher. Some Merles as well. I don't know. Nice push by Harold, but the Eastern team definitely hanging on for dear life. It's this torrent now pushing through the south and uh, Stagma throwing up defenses as quickly as he can trying to prevent this uh, attack from working but now Dark Green sending through more Mavericks. I don't think it's going to work quite as well this time though. Talos and Mortys should be able to deal with that so Stagma with the legendary defense here pulling off multiple fronts using every tool at his disposal even this torrent struggling to really get much accomplished and uh where is the lancer okay here is the lancer it is now in range and you can see here goes its shell land on a group of mortys sending them to the afterlife uh, without much uh ceremony Man, that Herald has a lot of fighters. Herald and EXE definitely with full air control, not letting the Eastern team have any chance in the sky. EXE moving through with these penetrators. And, uh, man, it's, it's just so hard to deal with these long range sniper rifles. Lancer's now, uh, Firing into the combat, I'd like to see him targeting structures, but uh, even the shells that fly into the battle still contributing, killing Mortys with every shot. This Lancer, very effective. Let's see how many uh, kills it has so far. Seven kills already on this guy. So things beginning to look dire for the Eastern team, of course. They've done a great job holding on, despite the fact that they lost Lemminkainen uh, about halfway through the game. This one Lancer could be a uh, game-ending problem for them. As uh, Stagma is on T3 air, but uh, not doing much with it so far. Not able to really do much with it, I think. Ooh, that was a nice hit from our Lancer taking out a big clump of units there. It shoots pretty fast. I'm pretty impressed with how quickly the Lancer shoots. Oh my god, that was a beautiful hit. So uh, T3 naval making a difference in this game for sure. Poor Stagma attempting to push into all these penetrators, but EXE making them look overpowered here. As, uh, once again, the Eastern team doing a decent job of holding on, but, uh, begins to feel a little bit hopeless. So now the Arc Light moving into position as well. Is this, uh, Lancer continuing to shell the shoreline. It's 
Stagma attempting yet another push and using the Umbra to get some cloaking here. But EXE bringing in the Tempests and with all these penetrators, it is going to be so difficult to break through. A Demolisher on the field as well. The Demolisher is kind of like a super penetrator. Shooting that long range railgun. But, uh, can one Demolisher stop them? One thing I will say is that the, uh, the Western team, despite definitely being ahead and having an advantage, uh, they're struggling to, they are struggling to push through here. Stagma attempting yet another attack. Bringing Harpies as well. Okay, bringing Harpies into the mix. We will target this Lancer. This thing has been a thorn in his side. It had 31 kills, but it will survive. There's enough air defense. They won't even stop that. Stagma attempting a push through here, but with all these penetrators, it's going to be difficult. And now EXE bringing the Tempest in as well. Western team, great, great job working together. This is a nice push. The Western team will collapse on Stagma. And stop this push from getting anything accomplished. And with all these players contributing, it is now a 4v1 situation. Even though Stagma had a very impressive army, you can't do a 4v1 here. The Arclight coming in to help as well with a Torrent. So, yeah, that is a terrible situation to be in. I think Stagma had the right idea, but this Lancer lives you now on 32 kills, and it's just such a problem now. Keep shot, taking out clumps of units. Uh, man, T3 Naval looking overpowered, my friends. So many Merles. The Western team now ready for a counterattack after uh, Stagma's army has been destroyed. Stagma working on a Vindicator. And that might that might help, but uh, I don't know if he's going to be able to finish it in time as the Western team finally moving through. Harold with a fearsome looking force of uh, four mammoths and some behemoths. And Morty's as well. Oh man. The Eastern team did such a good job of holding on. But oh, hold that thought. I'm missing the naval combat. The torrent was too far out ahead. And it will die to these three juicy warlords. But the arc light is still here in the back. If you could get the arc light in range, I think you could kill these warlords without much of a problem at all. Light. Sending out not only powerful torpedoes every second, using its lightning cannons as well, to shred through these warlords, making the warlords look as though they are thin as paper, dying without uh, any recourse at all. I think this game is going to come to a close. Once again, Harold has broken through with his uh, attacking force. Once again, the first time it was Cans uh, and Sumos, this time it was Mammoth, Behemoth, and Mortys. And even though Purple, the Cerberus and some shooters as well, I don't know if it's going to be enough to stop this. I'd like to see, uh, to see Dark Green using his fleet a little better, just move it up there, kill that warlord, and then he can start shelling the shoreline with impunity. The eastern team's base in tatters now. Arrow pushing through, that's a lot of shooters, but uh, is it enough? That's my question. This mammoth is still at full health. The Demolisher Adding some fire support, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Can they stop uh, Harold's push here? 
I don't think it matters. Even if they can't stop Carol's push, they've lost everything in the bottom. They've lost uh, both the T3 K-Bot and Air Factories. They're losing Eco. Losing everything. And now, with the T3 Naval pushing through the bottom, I think it's only a matter of time. It's Warlord. Such a beastly unit, but uh, being made to look incompetent by that arc light. Fourteen, clearly frustrated. It was a very, very close game. Both sides did amazingly well, and uh, once again, Harold showing us why it was so difficult to beat that push up the. Uh, the side of the Eastern team's base that ended up killing Lemminkainen. Definitely the push that uh, that led the game to this situation. Kind of the beginning of the end for our Eastern team. But I have to give props to EXE as well. Great air support. And of course, Dark Green doing well in the sea. Thanos a lot of support on the ground as well. Tons of Mortys. So, great teamwork by the Western team. Everyone certainly played their part. If Stagma had been able to control the C, the game could have ended completely differently, but EXE had perfectly timed gunship raid on Stagma's fleet. And that will allow the Western team the ability to break through on land and uh, even if the game goes on for another couple minutes I think this is a uh, very difficult position to uh, recover from. I will say the Eastern team has some nice defensive units Demolishers and Merles um, there was a Nova I saw Cerberus, obviously great on defense, uh, and Sumos and such. So it may take a while, but uh, unfortunately, I think it is only a matter of time as uh, there goes Stagma, he will leave the game. I think with that, that was a really close game. That was a, it was a really cool map. I I think either either side could have won, but ultimately the Western team had the better teamwork and uh, played better and uh, was able to pull out the win. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this cast. I will uh, definitely, I think my next game will be a 1v1, so uh, your eyes out for that one but uh this was a pretty epic 4v4 i really enjoyed it i'm glad we got to see t3 naval play a pretty decently sized part thank you for watching and i will see you in the next cast